one good place to play with forces uh, along one direction is the simulation called forces in 1D that's available at the website fet.colorado.edu fet, P-H-E-T dot Colorado dot edu so what we have here we have our familiar tree and house we have options here on top we can change the background color if you don't like this color okay now uh, you can type in values for the applied force here if you want or you are going to be able to do it by just uh, okay let's see clear okay or you are going to do it by just pushing against the cabinet you can actually change the cabinet to other objects textbook fridge dog crate whatever now we have another thing that's available here a diagram so actually I can pull it oh oops come on here okay so I had to click on it I forgot uh, that I had to do that but you click on this icon here and then it makes it in a pop-up window and actually through here you can decide the value of the forces okay. now you notice here when I don't have any force to apply let me clear it again so it resets um, when we don't apply any force on the cabinet we still have two forces present the gravitational force pointing in the downward direction and the normal force pointing in the upward direction the normal force is acting on the cabinet due to its contact with the floor here so it is the floor exerting a force on the cabinet and then there is the gravitational force that is the earth pulling down on the cabinet so that's a force a force exerted by the earth as a whole pulling down on the cabinet actually uh, you can do a lot more things here uh, you can remove the friction if you want uh, you can tell it not to show particular forces or show them you know you can decide on the barriers you can decide on the initial position of your cabinet now uh, initially it, w it looked like this but I uh, invoked more controls by clicking on this button so you can change the gravitational pull to check for example what happened on uh, what ha what would happen on the moon notice here how the forces got smaller what would happen if we are in outer space where there is no gravity at all so there is no forces now it's kind of a little curious that the house and the tree remain looking the same and we still have the paper looking like that but nevertheless if we have no gravity we have no forces and what would happen in Jupiter where the gravitational pull is much stronger than here then you can also uh, change the mass of the object in this case we have it at 200 kilograms but you can set it at any value you want okay. and, uh, and you can change we'll talk later on about these we have two types of what we call coefficient of friction one is a coefficient of static friction and it is set at 0.3 here and one coefficient of kinetic friction and it is set at 0.2 here we'll talk about those in a little bit I'm going to restore defaults okay now uh, we can actually graph the applied force the acceleration the velocity and the position and you can graph them all or one of them at a time I'm not going to graph anything at, at the beginning I'm going to focus on this diagram let's put it here 
and we are going to go back to the simulation and spend probably a whole recording just discussing different cases here using the simulation uh, because it will help us see things conceptually I hope okay so I'm going to push okay but see even though I'm pushing okay the force I'm applying I'm not going to be able to point to it but if you look at the diagram that shows the forces on top it has the yellow force that's the normal force the gravitational force that's the purplish force and then a blue tiny force that's my applied force that you see also here and the friction force notice here all the forces that are applied are balanced and we don't have any motion any acceleration of the object the yellow and the purple are, are balanced, are along the vertical and balanced, and the applied force Fa and the friction force must be balanced as well, and that's why we don't have acceleration. Now, as I increase my applied force, what's curious here is that the friction force increases as well. You notice that? Okay, it is increasing we still don't have motion or acceleration we don't have either okay I need to be careful here whenever I use the words because we have the tendency to speak of heaven motion when actually I should be talking of heaven acceleration because remember when we talked about Newton's first law we said we can have motion without having an imbalanced uh, I mean when our forces are balanced we don't need a force or an unbalanced force to have motion okay if there is no forces acting on an object if it is if it already has motion it's going to continue at its state of motion without any forces now in other words when the forces are balanced we can have motion or we can have no motion it does not matter but when the forces are unbalanced, what's going to happen? We are going to have acceleration. So I need to be careful when I talk. Uh, uh, I need to be saying more, we don't have acceleration. Even though I increase my force, then the friction force curiously increases, keeping the forces balanced. I, my, and my fridge is not moving and I keep on increasing uh, I mean let me take back and my fridge is not accelerating okay so you see even even me I make that mistake so it's a very difficult concept uh, to word it properly but it is a very important concept conceptually okay so I increase my applied force and curiously the friction force increases and we don't have acceleration now I keep on increasing keep on increasing and look here what happened is suddenly my applied force is larger became larger than the friction force and we have acceleration and the object started speeding up Okay, now I'm going to pause. One nice thing with this kind of simulation, I can rewind and play it back. What I want you to pay attention to, the fact that friction kept increasing until a certain level. And then suddenly it stopped from increasing. Actually, if you pay attention, it suddenly dropped in value and my fridge started accelerating okay let's look here so this is again a replay of what I did okay it's taken a little bit more time since I talked taking a little bit more time than I want but anyway 
Okay, as I increase my applied force, the friction force increases, and I still have balanced forces along the vertical, these two, along the horizontal, these tiny ones. And what's important is that the forces are balanced in every direction, and uh, if they are not balanced along a particular direction, we will have acceleration along that direction. So we keep on increasing Fa, and curiously, the friction force Ff increases at the same level. Okay, It's like the surfaces know, and the more applied force you give, the more friction they give. What's interesting here is to note, when I was applying no force at all, there was no friction. That's a little counterintuitive. You think that if an object is sitting, there must be a friction on it, but no. Friction comes into play only when we start applying the force. It comes into play to counteract our applied force, to balance our applied force. And actually, in this particular case, since we don't have motion, this type of friction, we are going to call it the friction of no motion. Okay. And the friction of no motion, it, the term that we use in physics, instead of saying no motion, we call it static friction. Static friction. So that's what we have right now, static friction. A large static friction force that came into play to balance the applied force here. Okay, let's see here the timing. Okay, it's increasing. Pay attention to the friction force. It still keeps on increasing right now. You can pay attention to it here as well, the size, which is equal to Fa. Applied force equal to friction force. You notice during the whole procedure, Fg and Fn never change, because there is no reason for them to change. One is due to the gravitational pull of the Earth, and the other one is due to the floor pushing on the cabinet. That's another thing to pay attention to. Floor and Earth are two different things. The floor, or if the cabinet was on top of a table, it would be different. Okay, let's see here. I'll go back to that point a little later, but you notice here the friction force still large, and suddenly it gets smaller. And I have a total force. What's my total force? That's the unbalanced force. So that one, suddenly my unbalanced force came into play when my applied force became larger than the friction force. And notice here, at some juncture, I removed the applied force, so my only force remained as the friction force. Okay, but we are not seeing what's happening here, so we will not worry about it for now. Okay.